In this video, I'm going to be working on this cocktail cabinet for a customer who got in touch after seeing another cocktail cabinet project I did a few months back. This one has some issues with the finish being faded in some areas and some missing and delaminated veneer. I'm not sure what species of wood veneers were used to make these cabinets, a few different ones I expect. The doors have a highly figured burl veneer which is book matched, i.e. symmetrical, and it appeared in good condition from a distance but under the light you could see the finish has cracked and lifted in places. On the inside it was in pretty good condition and I'm not going to be doing any work to that. There's a badge on the inside that identifies it as a gold feather products piece. The veneer used on the side panels and the top have a much straighter grain and this is where the issues with the delaminating veneer at the edges were. There are these two areas on the top and this large area on the side panel at the back. And at the very bottom someone had used packaging tape presumably to hold the loose pieces of veneer in place and that had left a really bad mess and it seemed a good place to start so I used my heat gun to loosen up the adhesive and peel it away. And then I used some white spirit to remove as much of the residue as possible. I'm going to be tapping the veneer with my fingernail a lot throughout this project to ascertain which areas of the veneer are loose and need re-gluing. I picked up some syringes on Amazon to squeeze in some new glue. I'll leave a link to these in the description box below if you're interested in them. They worked pretty well. I wanted to save as much of the original veneer as possible. I wrapped some boards in packaging tape and used these as clamping blocks. Using the packaging tape just means that the glue squeeze out won't stick to them. I bought a couple of veneer packs on eBay and I can only identify maybe half of these in terms of what wood species they are. And here I'm sorting them out to get a pile of veneers which I think look similar to the wood grain on the cabinet. I also wanted the veneers that were more pale in color compared to the veneer on the cabinet so that I can recolor any new patches to match it. For this large area, here I'm offering up a veneer and trying it out in various different orientations to try and get the best match for the wood grain. And it's never going to line up perfectly, but it's nice to try and match it wherever possible. I'm going to cut away the loose veneer using a steel rule to guide the knife to give me straight lines, which is going to help me to cut an accurate replacement patch. And as I have access to the substrate here, I can scrape away the old glue before applying the new, which will give better adhesion. I'm using my carbide scrapers here and these will be used a lot in this video. You can find detail for these in the My Tools link in the description box below. Next I'm going to use masking tape to make a template for the new veneer patch. I can use a pencil to make a rubbing of the shape. And then I can remove it and stick it onto the appropriate place on the new veneer. And then I can cut that with a sharp knife. I can then check it's a good fit, push it to where it needs to be and use a bit of masking tape as kind of like a hinge to hold it in position. Then I apply new glue and clamp it in place. I'm not too worried about glue squeeze out here because I'm going to be refinishing this cabinet anyway. I use my scraper to remove the rest of that masking tape residue on the bottom and while I'm at it I can scrape off the old finish too. A question I often get asked in these kind of videos is why I don't use paint and varnish stripper and I'll talk about that later in the video. I'm removing the old finish here as I'll need to try and blend in the old veneer with the new and the finish on this cabinet was really difficult to remove. It's probably the toughest I've ever encountered on a project like this. Once most of it is removed I sand away any remaining traces of it using 100 grit sandpaper. Because these veneers are so thin, I avoid using electric sanders as it's too easy to sand right through the veneer, particularly on areas like this near to the edges. Here I'm working on these curved front corners, no scraping here, just sanding, and always working in the direction of the grain. After a couple of hours I can remove the clamping blocks and just check that the veneer I re-glued is now nice and solid. 
and it sounded good so I moved on to sanding that area too. And then more veneer replacements here at the bottom. I talked about grain matching earlier and here's a good example of that. You'll see here with the arcs in the grain and I found a piece of wood with a similar pattern. So I mark up the area that I want to use. Now that the glue was dry on this patch, I could work on flushing up the edge using my block plane. And then I can sand the area to get the face of the veneer flush. Here I'm applying some shellac to a different piece of the same veneer just to check the colour. And you'll see here it's quite a bit lighter than the original veneer and it needed a bit more of a red tint to it too. So I mixed in a bit of walnut stain and tried that out and that was a closer match. It was still lighter in color, but that's a good thing because it's a decent place to start. So I applied that to the new patch. I wipe away the excess and I'll work more on the color matching later in the video. For the veneer on the top panel, that was the same process, except I couldn't use clamps here because I didn't have any that would reach. So I used a couple of heavy weights instead. Then it was on to scraping and sanding the rest of the cabinet, which took a lot longer than it usually does. So I mentioned scraping always in the direction of the grain. Here's the one exception. When I want to get right up to the edges, I work across the grain using the very tip of this triangular blade. And then the rest can be done in the direction of the grain. Here I'm removing the cabinet doors so I can work on them separately. And even though I'm not meant to be working on the inside, I did just wipe on some shellac in places where the old finish had been scuffed and scratched over time just to tidy it up a little. I was a bit apprehensive about removing the finish from these doors due to that highly figured grain, but you can see here that they really needed some attention due to all the cracking. The varying grain direction was going to make this difficult and I didn't want to damage the veneer, but I managed to do some areas with the scraper and the rest I did with sanding. I use 100 and then 180 grit. Here I'm wiping on some white spirit just to check that I had removed all of the old finish. This just highlights all of the areas that still need more work. You'll see here that there are a few areas that I missed, so I can come back and sand those areas back to the bare veneer. This process took a fair bit of time too. I also found a shrieking alien and an old man with a beard, although a lot of people on Instagram suggested that this was Cthulhu. I'm not sure how you pronounce that and I don't know what that is, but I agree that's definitely him or her or it. Here I'm removing the mirror from the inside of the door so that I can get access to the screws holding the handles in place so that I can work on that door at the top. Dedicate 
Once everything was scraped and sanded, I brushed away all of the dust and then I can start applying a coat of shellac to bring back the amber colour and pop the grain of the wood. And to apply this I'm using a piece of wadding wrapped in a scrap of cotton from an old shirt. Some of the patches needed a little bit more colour adding and the beauty of shellac is that it sticks to pretty much anything so you can just keep adding coats until you achieve the correct colour. And denibbing in between coats is important to keep things smooth and that also helps to blend it all in. So it was just a case of repeatedly adding colour, denibbing, adding more finish over and over again until the colour looked like it matched. The doors also got a couple of coats of shellac, denibbed in between. And because of the figure in this grain, I mainly sanded in a circular motion. I then applied a coat of water-based varnish to help seal everything that I'd done so far in. By the way, all of the finishes that I'm using in this video can be found in the My Tools link in the description box, including the shellac and the varnish. I'm always careful to make sure I catch any drips. I love water-based varnish because it's so easy to work with, it dries quickly, it's hard wearing, and it makes for easy cleanup of the paintbrushes too. And as long as you use a good quality brush and denib in between coats, you don't really get brush strokes either. Unfortunately, I had a few hairline gaps around my veneer patches, so I thought I'd try using some hard wax sticks to fill the gaps. First, I need to find the closest color match, and then I can heat up an old butter knife and get some in there. There was also a small dent on the front edge of the top panel that I could fill too. And then the excess wax can just be scraped away. That looks a little better. For a final top coat I used acrylic spray varnish mainly because it dries quickly and this project was overrunning so I was keen to get it out of the workshop so that I could get on with other things. At this point I could reattach the doors, handles and mirror. I'm just adding these hinges and the original screws are quite loose in these holes. I've had a look through my slotted screw box to see if I can find any slightly larger size but I haven't got any. So what I'm going to do instead is poke in a bit of cocktail stick and then break that off. And that's just going to give a little bit more wood for the screw to bite into. Nice and tight. And finally I worked on this key plate which was looking a bit messy. I assumed that this would be solid brass and I used some hot glue to stick it to a block so that I could sand it down using some 240 grit paper. Unfortunately though it wasn't solid brass, I guess this is steel. So I guess maybe it was brass plated at some point in the past or maybe even painted originally. Anyway, I had some gold spray paint so I used that to give it a freshen up. This one took a lot longer than I expected, mainly due to how stubborn the old finish was to remove. I spent between two and two and a half days on it in total and I had only quoted the customer for a day and a half of my time, but I'm still going to honour that quote. I'm relatively happy with how this one turned out, but to be honest I think I could have done a little better, mainly because some of the veneer patches weren't as tight as I'd have liked them to be. This is only my second time doing this kind of veneer repair stuff so I'm still learning and I learned a lot on this project which means the next one I do will hopefully be a lot better. I think I just should have spent more time making sure they were a perfect fit before gluing but I didn't expect the gaps to stand out as much as they did. I think that's because of the stain I used soaking into the edge grain of the veneer patch which made the gaps quite dark in colour making them stand out. That said, it's probably the sort of thing that most people won't notice, I hope, and certainly from a distance it looks okay. Here are some before and after shots, you'll see that it doesn't look drastically different to be honest, although the wood grain is now a bit more vibrant and stands out a bit more. Hopefully the customer will be happy with it, 
Now all that's left to do is to give it a good clean and polish on the inside before he picks it up. So I mentioned earlier about why I don't use paint and varnish stripper. Here in the UK, the EU banned one of the key ingredients called dichloromethane. Not sure if I said that right. But anyway, without that ingredient, it makes the stripper pretty awful, to be honest. I've never found it to work effectively at all at removing finishes. That key ingredient is hazardous though, and apparently quite nasty stuff to work with. You can still get it, but it's only for industrial use. I'm not sure on the legality side of things whether I'm able to use it or not. It's not something I've looked into, to be honest. Usually scraping and sanding works fine for me, but every so often you'll get a really stubborn finish like in this project. And on this occasion, I actually did really wish that I had some of that industrial strength stripper to use. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more weekly woodworking videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do that via a one-off donation on PayPal or via Patreon or YouTube channel membership where you can also get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.